Hello everyone, welcome to Reach Goals. In the previous video, I talked about how to have a system design like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. And this is a follow up video and in this I'm going to talk only about the interview questions related to the WhatsApp or the Facebook Messenger. So in the previous WhatsApp system design video, I talked about multiple scope which is related to authentication, one on one messaging, group messaging. I also talked about multimedia messaging. I also covered about the database schema and how to scale the application. So in the previous video, we talked about the architectural diagram and we also talked about how to send a message from Joe to Kim in applications like WhatsApp, right? Now let's talk about some of the interview questions, right? So the first question is what happens if the server dies before sending a message to the receiver? Now let's take an example like you know Joe wants to send a message to Kim. So now Joe sends a message to Kim and it reaches the node 1. As soon as it reaches the node 1 due to some issue node 1 fails right. So now how the message is going to reach Kim. Let's see how it works. So what actually we have to do here is as soon as Joe sends a message it has to be sent parallelly to two different machines. One is node 1 as well as for the node 1s right. So in this case what happens is even though one machine fails the other machine can be utilized right. So in this case two messages will be reached to the server and now based on the unique ID which has been generated from the client we can see whether both the messages are same. If it is same then we have to consider one as a duplicate and we can filter that and we can send uh, one message back to the Kim. So that is how it works. And this is something similar to database master and slave correct. So let's say if the master fails, you can make the slave as a master and you can keep on working, right? So something similar to that we can adopt over here to make sure even if the node 1 fails, we can utilize some other node to make sure the messages are not failed at one end and so that it can reach the receiver. The second question here is how to order the messages. So in case of a distributed system, what happens is messages is generated at different locations and it goes to the queue, right? So now the queue has to make sure the messages are reached sequentially to different users, right? So in case of this, what we have to do is we have to make sure the timestamp is captured properly and based on the time sequencing or the time capture, it, has, it can be sorted and it can be sequenced and it can be sent to the different customers or different users. So that is how ordering of the messages are happening in kind of a distributed system or in case of chat messaging applications, right? The third question I have is how to secure the message. In case of applications like WhatsApp or any kind of chat applications, if you want to encrypt the message, the user's device should be able to generate two different keys. One is public key and the private key. So the encryption process actually takes place in the phone itself, right? So the private key will be remaining in the user's device and the public key will be transferred through the wire to the receiver, right? So the next step is the public key encrypts the sender's message on the phone even before it reaches the centralized server. The server is only used to transmit the encrypted message. So the message can only be unlocked by the private key of the receiver. So no third party can be intruding in between to encrypt or decrypt the messages, right? Even the WhatsApp cannot interpret in between, correct? So that is how the secured messages are sent from the client to the receiver, right? So the fourth question I have is how the server capacity is handled when there is a spike in messages, right? So in case of applications like WhatsApp or any chat application, what happens here is the traffic could spike during a sports event or even during the holidays like New Year, etc., right? So always when we plan for a capacity, what we have to do is we should provide a little bit of headroom right. The headroom is nothing but a buffer where whenever there is a spike we can utilize this headroom right. So one more thing we have to notice over here is the all these messages are sent to the queue correct. So the queue can grow up very quickly or it can come down very fastly right. So when the queue is growing very fastly we can clearly understand that the messages are getting piled up and based on that the capacity or the ability of the queue has to be increased, right? So that is how you can plan for the capacity when there is a spike in the messages, correct? So the fifth question is how many servers can be used, right? So basically this has to be done based on our capacity planning. Let's take an example, like right? So if the server can withstand 1 million users with one message per 5 minutes, we have to proportionally derive for 1 billion users, right? We also need to consider about the spiking messages like football event, the new year, etc., right? So based on that we can scale and that is how the capacity of the system can be calculated.
so basically what we have to do is we have to take one node and we have to figure out the capacity of that we have to see how much capacity it can withstand like you know how many connections it can withstand how many users it can withstand etc so if you are able to figure out for one node we can proportionally scale that right so let's take a case like it can withstand one million users for one machine right so let's say if you want to have 10 million users similarly we can scale that for a 10 machines or 10 nodes so that is how the capacity or how many servers are required is being calculated across the infrastructure right the sixth question i have is what database to use so i have clearly discussed about this in the previous video related to the system design of whatsapp let's go through once again right so here i'm going to consider database like hbase which is running on the hadoop so the reason is uh, for multiple things right so i'm not going to use uh, rdbms because there is no transaction involved in this system right so let's see why we have to use hbase right the first thing is there is no need to have a transaction on the table right and second thing is it supports and performs very well in the high volume transactions like read and write and it is also very good in handling the variable uh, size data for example in case of whatsapp or in case of a facebook messenger the data size which you are sending might be varying we might be having one line or it may be a 10 lines right so that is why it supports very well in case of variable size data so i'm considering hbase so the next reason i'm considering hbase is it is well suited for key value workloads and the sequencing is possible with respect to the timestamp right and also HBase on Hadoop is highly scalable because it is put on the HDF infrastructure and it is distributed, right? So the seventh question I have is how to plan the capacity for the image server. I have already discussed about how to have a hardware capacity planning in case of any system design. I will put that in the description and if you have any questions, you can put in the comment section. So the eighth question I have is how the messages reaches the group, right? Let's take an example like Joe wants to send a group message, right? So it goes into the database and figures out all the users within the group and the node will start sending the messages to the different group members, right? So all the messages will reach to the different users or different systems, right? So now what happens in the UI is based on the group ID or based on the ID coming from the response, it will figure out what group it has to land. So in the UI will decide to put the messages into the specific group and that is how you see the messages on the group when you open the whatsapp application right so the ninth and the final question i have here is what will you do if you need to change the node after the pre-allocation so if you want to understand this concept i would suggest you have to go into the previous whatsapp system design video and understand what the pre-allocation means so basically what happens here is as soon as the user registers into the whatsapp a node is allocated for a specific user or to the specific device right so after the node has been allocated there could be a reason for changing the node for example the node could have failed or the node might not be working well right so now the node 1 which is called originally might be changed into the node 2 or it might be changed to the node 3 so in this case what actually has to happen is a question right so what actually happens here is two different things will happen one is you have to go to the database and change the node 1 to node 2 that is the new node has to be changed and the second step is all the user who are sitting in the node 1 has to be moved into the new node 2 right so that is how the system works like this right the basically what happens here is during the maintenance cycle there will be a bad job or the script running behind the scene to do all those activity even before intimate even before intimating to the user or even we can do without even intimating to the user this is part of a regular maintenance happening in case of whatsapp or any kind of a chat messaging applications like what we discussed earlier right 